What are these people shouting? Again? These people are shouting no more blackface. The problem with this slogan is that we in the Netherlands have never had blackface. What we in the Netherlands have is black peat and this is a completely different phenomenon than blackface. Blackface is a 19th century theater phenomenon of black slaves working on a plantation in the United States. Whereas black peat is based on European pagan traditions, the historic reality of Moorish raiders abducting European children. The history of Spain and very specifically the historic relationship between Spain and the Netherlands. The Netherlands having become an independent nation after rebelling against the Spanish Empire. Black Pete coming from Spain with a boat, wearing the clothes typically worn by Spanish noblemen and kidnapping children back to Spain, just like the Moorish raiders did during the time of Al-Andalus. This means that these people are so completely uninformed that for nearly 10 years now they've been shouting the wrong slogan. Logan. This is how completely ridiculous these people are. First, they are on the wrong side of the Atlantic Ocean, and second, if they actually were to go to the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, they would be too late, because theaters in the United States have not been doing any blackface performances for at least half a century. The question for the Dutch, however, is this. Can a bunch of anti-Western activists attack something and then get what they want, despite of them being factually wrong? I dare say say that this is the most important question that the Dutch people and many other western nations will have to answer during the next 10 years. And this question goes much deeper than just black peat, because the process that the left follows in order to get rid of something is always the same. They don't actually come to you like, hey, I think black peat needs to be abolished because x, y and z, and then engage in an actual exchange of ideas of which the goal is to find out the truth, the left is not interested in the truth because the left is ideological. No, they use disinformation, intimidation and emotional blackmailing. In addition, they do the following. They target your children. They don't need to actually convince you that they're right. No, they will just teach their false ideas to your children while you are too busy working full time. And because the left controls the education system, they can do this. And they are actually doing it. The chairholder of the institute responds responsible for the quality of the education system in the Netherlands is a communist, a man who is known for supporting Mao Zedong and Pol Pot. When the Polish people were fighting against communism, this man was cheering for the communists. So can these anti-Western activists who have infiltrated the institutions in the Netherlands launch a senseless attack against something without having the most basic understanding of what they're attacking and then get what they want anyway? If for the Dutch the answer to this question is yes, then the Netherlands has officially reached a new era, the post-truth era, an era in which truth is overwhelmed by ideological garbage produced by the left. The corrupt Dutch establishment has been gradually replacing Black Pete with this weird altered version of it. In this video I'm going to go through the process that the left has followed in order to reach this goal, so that you get an idea of how this goes. But let's first make very very clear that in the Netherlands no normal person ever thought that black peat was racist. No white person, no black person, no purple person, no brown person, no orange person. The systematic hate campaign against Black Pete started when in 2013 unelected United Nations mandate holder Vereen Shepard stated that the tradition of Sinterklaas and Black Pete is a return to slavery and colonialism. When that happened, everybody in the Netherlands thought it was kind of funny. Some weird lady from the United States who doesn't understand anything who just makes this claim. Ha ha ha. However, around that same time, these weird little action groups started to suddenly emerge 
emerge in the Netherlands. In 2014, anti-Western activists Quincy Garrio, Sunny Bergman and some others initiated a lawsuit against the Sinterklaas and Black Pete event in Amsterdam based on allegations of racism and the judge somehow concluded that they were right. However, later that year the Council of State, a higher body, abolished the ruling made by the Amsterdam judge. Also in that same year Bergman's documentary Our Colonial Hangover was released, which as the name suggests connects Black Pete to colonialism, which is simply false. The documentary made by Bergman contained material that misrepresented what Black Pete looks like. Really a scandal. More or less from the year 2015 onwards, the tax-funded National Public Broadcasting Foundation, the NPO, gradually intensified their propaganda campaign against Black Pete. They started inviting these people in their talk shows to talk about how much discriminated they felt because of Black Pete. However, not only the tax-funded broadcasting foundation, but also RTL, the commercial broadcasting, started doing the same. For example, in 2015, they invited Roger Ross Williams, an actor from the US, to talk about how he feels offended by Black Pete. You know, my skin, my hair is not a costume. It's not to be, to be it's not a caricature. Um, it's not to be uh, made fun of. And Black Pete is a bumbling idiot. He may bring presents and, and give ca candy to the kids but this is a this is a negative stereotype and it's making fun of, of who I am and my heritage and it's rooted in slavery so and it was immediately very clear that none of these TV programs were actually about discovering the truth. You would think that if a black person from the United States comes to the Netherlands to complain about Black Pete, that the Dutch TV show organizers would invite real experts on the topic in order to explain to this person from the United States that he doesn't need to feel discriminated because the tradition simply isn't based on European colonialism. However, the goal of the left-wing media is not to find out the truth, but instead to influence what Dutch people believe about the world, and especially about themselves and their own ancestors. It is not about informing the Dutch, but instead about influencing the Dutch, manipulating the Dutch, etc. Also in that same year, a man named Jerry Afrie, whom in the past had been arrested for attacking a policeman, together with another left-wing activist, created a package of teaching material for children. And of course, these men did not just do that on their own. These people belong to well-organized action groups which are financed either with tax money or by people like George Soros. So you can see that the left knows perfectly well how to target your children. In 2016 the city of Amsterdam got rid of Black Pete and fully replaced him with this weird altered version. The city of Amsterdam is always the quickest to implement these type of policies. The place is basically run by former communists. During the time of the Soviet Soviet Union, the University of Amsterdam used to be a cesspool of Marxism, and today it basically still is. The only difference is that they implement their Marxist framework on cultural classes instead of economic classes, and that they then call it cultural analysis and anthropology and things like that. However, also in 2016 in Amsterdam, a school where almost all the children are of non-Western origin supported Black Pete and did not want to change it, simply because none of the children children and the children's parents wanted to get rid of Black Pete. So as always you can see that this attack on Black Pete didn't really come from the people of color in the Netherlands, no, it came from the left claiming to speak in the name of the people of color in the Netherlands. So in the name of what according to their Marxist framework is an oppressed class. Also in 2016 the children's ombudsman, a lady whom by coincidence is also a very strong proponent of migration of non-westerners into to the western world, stated in her report that Black Pete needs to change, because according to her the tradition endangers children's rights, as defined in a UN treaty. And 100 Dutch celebrities in an open letter demanded the removal of Black Pete from a yearly national broadcast. And what also happened in that same year is that the intimidation aspect started to become more of a thing. A bakery in the city of Amsterdam removed its Black Pete products after someone wrote 
your racist owner shop by using graffiti. So things basically started to get more aggressive from the side of the left. In 2017 the Sinterklaas Circus near the city of Rotterdam got forced to stop their activities as a result of death threats and threats to set the circus tent on fire, something that could potentially kill or damage children for the rest of their lives. Of course the left wing media didn't care, no talk shows were organized in which people condemned this type of behavior, no children's ombudsman talked about how burning children alive would violate the UN Children's Treaty. It is all good because death threats are ok, as long as the left does it. Meanwhile in the municipal council of the city of Rotterdam, an alliance of left wing parties and Islamic parties decided that black peach should over time disappear. And Dutch minister of education, culture and science Ingrid van Engelshoven, also known for rewriting Dutch history education in order to make it more consistent with left wing ideology, launched an open attack on black peat by stating that tradition should go along with the time. Go along with the time. So this is a famous tactic that the viewers from Eastern Europe will recognize all too well. Acting as if a rejection of left wing ideology is the same as going back in time. Apparently this minister of education badly needs some education about black peat herself. Now there is this province in the Netherlands called Friesland which is a little bit like a separate country within the Netherlands. The people there, the Frisians, are much more rooted in common sense than the people in other parts of the Netherlands. And as a result, the Frisians are a bit more immune to left-wing ideology. In November of 2017, some anti-Black Pete action group wanted to go to the province of Friesland in order to protest against Black Pete during a Sinterklaas event. And often, when this happens, they basically ruin the party. People are trying to celebrate Sinterklaas with their children, and these people start screaming in their faces. Children start crying, it is basically ridiculous that it is allowed. Of course there is the right to protest, but yelling racist in the face of children is probably a form of child abuse. But sadly, the children's ombudsman has no problem with it, and apparently the UN Treaty on Children's Rights is suddenly no longer important when these things happen. So these Frisian people decided to block the road on the way to their province. So here on this picture you can see these people and I think that in one of these buses are the activists, perhaps in both of these buses actually. So they basically blocked the road, which is illegal in the Netherlands. Now there are people in the Netherlands who think that these people are heroes. I partly agree, but blocking the road is against the law and of course the law must be maintained. The problem with this however is that the law in the Netherlands is always enforced very selectively. For example when anti-black beat activists blocked a road in the city of Rotterdam. They were removed by the police but none of them got sanctioned, like these Frisian people. Likewise there is this phenomenon called Turkish weddings and some of these also engage in road blocking behavior on highways and in this case the law rarely gets maintained. Likewise when Pegida wanted to protest in front of a mosque, the right to protest was blocked by a bunch of angry Muslim guys and none of them got arrested for taking away the right to protest. And of course the left didn't care. So in the Netherlands the law does not apply equally to every individual, nor to every protest group. In 2018 things started to intensify even more. In that year someone wanted to murder Sinterklaas, Dutch alternative media channel Geen Stel decided to go to a Dutch town in order to film how these protesters behave towards people celebrating their own national tradition. So it could be seen on camera that they're ruining the atmosphere, making little children cry, yelling racist in the face of little children etc. It is really 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 disgusting to be honest. So people could basically see with their own eyes how disgusting these people are. And when a counter protester dressed up as Black Pete appeared, the counter protester got taken away by the police. And of course all the left wing politicians and the mainstream media didn't care. Nor did the children's ombudsman care about what these people were doing to little children. In the city of Eindhoven a group of hooligans decided to position themselves very close to the place where the protesters were located and started making a lot of noise. Just like in the case with the Frisians who blocked the road, many Dutch people find these people heroic. Again I partly agree and actually these hooligans did not block any road, but some of them were actually throwing beer cans and eggs at the protesters. Of course immediately after it the overwhelming hypocrisy of the Dutch political class became clear because now suddenly all of the establishment parties came out to strongly condemn the hooligans. 
while they have no problem at all with left-wing activists who yell racist in the face of Dutch children. And furthermore, the municipality of Eindhoven actually used this event to make steps in the direction of abolishing Black Pete. So when left-wing protesters protest, it is used to make steps in the direction of abolishing Black Pete. But when Dutch counter-protesters show up to protest against it, it is also used to move in the direction of abolishing Black Pete. The entire system is basically rigged. That's what it is. They know that they want to abolish it and they would just use everything they can, whatever happens, doesn't matter who does what, to move in the direction of abolishing Black Pete. Something similar happened in the northern city of Groningen, where hooligans also came to yell slogans at the activists. And in 2019, as a result of this event with these hooligans, the city of Groningen stated to move in the direction of abolishing Black Pete over time. Also in 2019, the threats of violence from the left reached new levels. This is a picture that one of the activists posted on her Facebook page. On it, you can see her holding a gun. And another activist made a picture of herself holding a rifle and seemingly being about to execute. Black Pete. And of course the left-wing media didn't mind, the left-wing politicians didn't mind, the legal system didn't interfere. As I said, the law in the Netherlands is enforced very selectively. Imagine what would happen if one of these hooligans would do something like that. Or imagine what would happen if some Geert Wilders supporter would post these type of pictures on his or her Instagram page. If that were ever to happen, the politicians, the media, the academic world, the children's ombudsman would all start making noise about it and start talking about international human rights and that there must be more censorship on social media in the name of tolerance and so on. But if the left does it, they don't have a problem with it because it is basically they themselves that are doing it anyway. But in 2019 there was also a lot of good news regarding Black Pete. Bonaire, a former Dutch colony, a place that is actually inhabited by real black people, maintained Black Pete. And the same is the case for most places on Curaçao and Antilles, which basically indicates how ridiculous ridiculous all of this really is. Again, it has nothing to do with black people, it has to do with left-wing ideology. And a municipality in Brazil with the name Olambra, where they also celebrate Sinterklaas and Black Pete, which is very interesting in itself, decided to implement a law that declared the Black Pete an official cultural heritage. So Olambra is showing Olanda how to do it, basically. Let's move on to 2020, the year when the entire western world went crazy about some criminal in the United States dying as a result of drug overdose and a badly trained policeman. This also had serious consequences for Black Pete. Facebook decided to start censoring pictures of Black Pete. So when you upload a picture of you with your family celebrating Sinterklaas, the picture will be censored if it contains any Black Pete. In addition, Dutch companies Bol.com and Cool Blue decided to ban Black Pete and the Dutch army banned Black Pete. So the people that are supposed to defend the Dutch nation against the Russians aren't even capable of defending a Dutch tradition. So this is very worrisome in itself. The prime minister of the country after inviting Black Lives Matter to his office also stated for the first time that Black Pete needed to disappear. And for the first time, according to a poll conducted by a left-wing media outlet, the support for Black Pete dropped below 50%. So in 2020, it went really really fast all of a sudden. In addition the city of Eindhoven decided that from now on Black Pete needs to look like this and a bunch of schools decided to ban Black Pete permanently. And what happens after I don't know because as I am creating this video it is half October. Mm -hmm. 
So what to make of all of this? The first conclusion is that the left's hate campaign against this Dutch tradition is working. And as always, especially within the younger generation. According to INO research, the support for maintaining Black Pete within the population between 18 and 34 in 2016 was 64%, but in 2018 was only 38%. Also, there is a clear difference between the young people and the older people. So the left has successfully influenced the younger generation and I suspect that the real young children who are now in primary school are getting brainwashed by the left even more dramatically. So the left is getting what they want and you know what the worst thing about all of this is? That it all isn't true. No Blackbeat is not a reference to colonialism, it is something completely completely different and also something that is much more interesting. As I said in my main video about Blackbeat, this figure is a historical gold nugget. I can't think of any other European traditional figure that reflects old European historical realities as brilliantly as Black Pete does. This tradition is brilliant and needs to be protected and respected. In the Netherlands there is this concept called the Black Pete debate, a concept that every Dutch person is familiar with. Every year it returns. The Black Pete debate. The Black Pete debate however is not a real debate because it is not about finding out the truth and showing both sides of the argument. The Black Pete debate is a social engineering project of which the outcome was already determined beforehand. The Black Pete debate is making progress, they often say, as the corrupt leftist establishment moves in the direction of abolishing Black Pete. As a result of a very productive Black Pete debate, the Dutch are accepting the removal of Black Pete, or the removal of Black Pete has been a very organic and spontaneous process to make it look as if the removal of Black Pete was some kind of very natural process. Well, no, it really is not. The removal of Black Pete is just as spontaneous as the lawsuit against Geert Wilders. They already had the pre-printed forms ready and all they needed to do is collect some signatures from some leftists on the streets and then put some corrupt left-wing judges on it who already had their verdict ready before the process even started. Let's go back to the question. Can a bunch of anti-Western activists attack something and then get what they want despite of them being factually wrong? Yes, they can. And this is extremely worrisome. Because if they can do this to Black Pete, they can also do it to other things. For example, what about important national statues? They have already started the hate campaign against Dutch statues in the Netherlands. And actually, if you think about it, the left already has been doing this process for decades. The same process process that the left implemented against Black Pete, they also implemented against other things. Where is the Dutch right to self-determination? taken away by the left, along with the nation state. Did the Dutch vote in favor of the European constitution? No, they did not. But it was enforced by the corrupt establishment anyway. The goal of a democracy and the nation state is so that a nation can control their own destiny in their own homeland. Representatives of a nation should among other things be guarders of the national culture. Dutch politicians should therefore protect traditions like Black Pete. This is their responsibility because because they are representatives of the Dutch people. Today in the Netherlands this is the complete opposite because the people's representatives are somehow not representing the people but are instead actively undermining the people and betraying the people. What the peoples of the West need to understand is that for the left it is never enough. After they destroyed one thing they will simply move on to something else. Thanks for watching this video, please share it and never stop speaking the truth. I wish you a nice day.